I wanted to rant for a second here before getting started. It shouldn't have taken me two weeks to review this game. Yeah, you know, I have SGB the Let's Play channel, I have Brain Scratch commentaries, but even with all that, I did not mean to make you guys wait this long. The original plan was to record Star Fox Assault right after I wrapped up AM2R, to try and get this marathon finished before October started, but then a couple of things happened. Firstly, my fucking video upscaler shorted out. It's what I use when I want to record games from older consoles using HDMI. It just makes it easier when all I need to use is my HDMI capture card. But then that started to flip out too. It wouldn't read my video signals of anything I plugged into it, and even when I got picture on the rare occasion, there was no sound. So not only did I have to get a new upscaler, I had to get a new HD60 capture card too. It took a few days, but I got this new upscaler. Looks great, came from Japan, meaning I can't do much of this instruction manual, but that's what the internet is for. But then the damn thing needed a firmware update, which I could only do by downloading a file from the official website, placing it inside a micro SD card to put inside the micro SD slot of this device, but the upscaler didn't come with one, so now I had to get a micro SD card. I should also note that the upscaler has a USB port to connect directly to the computer, but I guess it doesn't mean anything in updating it. I just want some nice footage from the GameCube, Jesus. So all in all, it took about a week to get everything situated, just so I can get back into the swing of things. I guess last week could be considered a, an impromptu vacation. I feel, I feel refreshed. To be honest, I was feeling a tad burnt out. Yeah, n nothing too serious. It, just, it happens in this line of work every once in a while. But you know, I could, I could worry about that later. I got a Star Fox marathon to finish, so let's go. <laughs> But as I said earlier, under normal circumstances, it shouldn't have taken me two weeks to review this. Star Fox Assault, the second Star Fox adventure on the Nintendo GameCube, and direct sequel to Star Fox Adventures. The dinosaur planet, now officially known as Saria, has been liberated from the unexpected tyranny of Andross and the Sharp Claws, peace has been restored to the Lilat system, and the Star Fox crew fully reunited as their next adventure awaits, now with the newly recruited Crystal, who wished to remain with the team as thanks for Fox saving her at the end of the previous adventure. Now we have a brand new Star Fox team, meaning Crystal replacing Peppy, who is more comfortable being mission control via the Grey Fox nowadays, his old age is finally caught up with the old hair, and the development team want to use all the time they can to give Fox all sorts of sexual tension. Not that it has any overall significance in the story here. Team Star Fox are lending assistance to the Cornerian army as they wipe out the small remainder of Andross' space armada when a new threat suddenly makes a shocking entrance, the Aperoids. You ever seen Star Trek Next Generation? Think of them as the Borg. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, they're this collective bunch of otherworldly parasitic creatures that can corrupt machines and organic beings alike, further increasing their numbers. They plan to assimilate everything in the universe, so Star Fox suits up for the fight of their lives against the Aperoid scum, at times making tough decisions concerning their friends and receiving assistance from the unlikeliest of people, Star Wolf, realizing that their opposition requires to take a back seat this time for the much bigger threat here. And the combined forces of the Quinarian army, Star Fox, and Star Wolf eventually prove too much for the Aperoids, and soon enough, the threat is completely wiped out from the universe. The stakes are much bigger this time around for sure, but the plot isn't any more complicated. You could replace the Aperoids with Andros and it wouldn't be much different. Star Fox Assault lacks in an elaborative story, which to be fair, has been the case since the SNES original, but it picks up the slack and character interaction and everybody's got something to say in Star Fox Assault, from the team trading jokes and jabs at each other during missions, to Star Wolf having a dick measuring contest in a dogfight near their home base. It's a degree deeper than the interactions we had in Star Fox 64, certainly much more than what we had in Star Fox Adventures, which is one of the things I think that game sorely lacked. As a fan, I love to see how the team communicate and work with each other, and I'm always a sucker for the rival team up and seeing where that leads. It's a safe bet you're a fan as well if you're jumping into this game at all. Not that I think first time players have to worry about getting lost in continuity, Star Fox barely has any. The manual still has quick synopsis synopses of previous adventures, so you can always read those to catch up. The writing is pretty good. I kind of like how this game highlights how annoying Slippy was in Star Fox 64, so they make him more of a hard ass here in response. Like, even he gets sick of everyone's shit after a while. Try not to make a mess of things, Slippy. You would never ask about those, seriously. Shut your beak for once. I want to say the voice acting professionally is a slight step above Star Fox 64 as the characters seem to try and take themselves seriously this time, but professional delivery or not, some lines, especially from Fox, are hokey as shit, and with the more serious tone in mind, it's, it's, it's bad at points. She tried to bypass evolution by stealing souls but you have to be born with one. But I won't continue to harp on that further because now I'm just too distracted by the 
gorgeous soundtrack. It's the first thing to greet you when you boot the game up, and it alone sets the stage for Star Fox's next space adventure. They got a full out orchestra for this, giving us epic renditions of previous Star Fox themes, mostly from 64, and original compositions that feel right at home when you're blasting enemies out of the sky or orbit. It's no different than how Super Mario Galaxy score made everything feel larger than life, grandiose, and for a space adventure, I think you need something like that. It's a fantastic score. So please give it a listen when you have the time, though you probably already heard some of it thanks to Super Smash Brothers Brawl. The game looks great too, but I wish it'd make up its mind over the frame rate. The R-Wing levels are usually 60 frames per second, but that's not always the case as this mission can show you, and the planetary missions are locked at 30. I can play with either, Star Fox 64 and Star Fox SNES were certainly not reaching 60 anytime soon, I'm just perplexed. I'm used to frame rates taking hits in a title's multiplayer, not so much in single player stuff unless it wasn't, you know, properly optimized. Our developers are not rare this time, it's Namco, yeah, of uh, Pac-Man fame, among a shitload of other things. You see, you can even collect a little special flags from Rally X to improve your score and you can unlock Xevious when you collect every silver medal in the game. I thought the obvious choice would be Galaga, but maybe that was too obvious. So now we got Rare and Namco in charge of Star Fox games, and it makes me think that maybe at this time, Nintendo just didn't have the time or resources to make their own in-house Star Fox titles at this point, and they would just hire anyone who's up to the task. But with Namco at the helm, the goal of Star Fox Assault seemed to be, let's not do what Star Fox Adventures did. Now, I'm sure Star Fox Adventures has its fans. It did sell enough to make players choice. But I think Star Fox fans probably felt it was too much of a departure from the established formula, so Namco decided to take things back to familiar territory, at least somewhat. We have a couple of gameplay styles here. We can take to the skies and beyond in our R-Wings as previously, complete with all the tricks of the trade introduced in Star Fox 64. We have a select number of all range stages where we can control the Landmaster tank, decimating ground and foes with barrel rolls, charged cannon shots, and pure unadulterated ramming. Then at times, we're required to travel on foot, and blast enemies out of their socks with an arsenal of weapons. It's kind of like Star Fox Adventures, only Fox actually brings a fucking gun this time around, thank god. Multiple guns at that, a charge blaster, machine gun, rocket launchers, grenades, a powerful shit sniper rifle, a fucking Gatling gun, now that one's pretty rare, but man, when you get that, you can just hear the Aperoid shit in their pants. But one step at a time here. Star Fox Assault doesn't give you the option of selecting a pathway and getting to the end however you see fit. It's one big linear adventure. Like, well, I say big, but Star Fox Assault is only about two hours long, cutscenes and all, assuming you're not playing on the highest difficulty, gold. But even then, higher difficulties don't give you new stages to explore like the other games did, it just makes enemies tougher to beat. So in that regard, Assault loses a bit of free playability that Star Fox 64 flourished in, and the game is already short enough as is. I mean, nothing wrong with the linear game, as long as it's good, but this is a little tricky to recommend because when it comes to games with different playstyles, as you know from my Sonic videos, it's all a matter of whether or not you can get down with what they have to offer. Diehard fans of Star Fox 64 will likely adore the returning R-Wing sections, and there's a healthy dose of R-Wing love here. Their stage is entirely dedicated to the classic space machine, and I think they're of a similar caliber to the N64 game. You got times where you could blaze through tight corridors and pick up upgrades to your firepower, your teammates can help assist in cover fire and deliver goods for you helping their ass out, and a select number of huge bosses await to test how well you can steer your ship or how fast you can mash the fire button. Even when you got those on foot missions, the R-Wing can be made available to neutralize aerial opponents. It's sort of like they're revitalizing the abandoned concepts of Star Fox 2 in some way, but let's not kid ourselves. R-Wing gameplay is only about 50% of Star Fox Assault. The remainder of the game is on the ground, either inside a Landmaster or on foot, where you're often tasked with destroying a certain number of targets. It's usually these hatchers that can spawn more enemies until you wipe them out, and you have to scour high and low to find them all. It's like a treasure hunt. You got a radar that can help you spot enemies, and it does a good job telling you where your next objective is located. I don't like how the map takes up the middle of the screen when you're looking for shit. I gave Echo the Dolphin on the Dreamcast shit for that, and I'm giving Star Fox Assault similar shit. But the radar is usually good enough on its own, so I really didn't need to use the map at all. I mean, whether in the air or on the ground, you're always blasting the Aperoid Menace off the face of whatever planet you're in with a selection of projectile-based weaponry. In that regard, Star Fox Assault is consistent, and I appreciate that. In my opinion, the do-or-die factor in accepting the on-foot missions is the controls. If you think the Landmaster is the only tank-like entity you're controlling, think again, because Fox, outside the vehicle, still has tank controls, and as you all know, I'm not a huge fan of that in third-person adventures. Now, thankfully, there's very little in what I regard as platforming in this title. Star Fox Assault is mainly focused on you shooting stuff, and I thank the high heavens for that because no game, shooter or not, should ever have the jump button mapped to the Y button. That's not right. 
The default control scheme felt a little familiar to me. Basically, with the exception of the jump button, it's Metroid Prime. The A button shoots, you switch weapons with the C stick, assuming you're not using the alternate control scheme which maps the camera control to the C stick, but for some reason Fox allows tank controls drop your mind over that for a second. The R trigger lets you tilt your gun for precision aiming, the L trigger lets you strafe and dodge attacks. It's Metroid Prime from a third person perspective, and no lock on. There's a bit of an auto lock on, but it's sort of picky with distance and not as reliable as manually hitting the button yourself, I find. Kind of like Shadow the Hedgehog, but with better controls. Now, if you're willing to deal with tank controls, I mean, maybe you're okay with that, who knows? I don't think the on-foot missions are too bad. I can aim, shoot, and move around just fine after I get accustomed to them, which didn't take me very long at all. Mechanically, these missions are sound. They could have used more variety. There's only so many hatches I can blow up before I begin to wonder when the mission ends, and if you die, you gotta shoot them all down again, so fuck that. When I can get away with it, I bore the Landmaster because it gets me results faster. It is, after all, a tank. They're not outstanding. They're not terrible. They're just there. However, I know it's because it controls so equally to one of my favorite games in the GameCube that I'm going a bit easy on it. Star Fox Assault would only be a 30 minute game if it just had the R-Wing stuff, but like it or not, Star Fox Assault is more than just R-Wing. Hey, at least to me, it's more engaging than being on the ground in Star Fox Adventures. Fox should use a gun, not a mystical spirit lance. And one of my favorite moments in Assault is traveling back to Saria, the dinosaur planet from Star Fox Adventures, and helping the locals with actual fucking space weapons. As one who experienced Star Fox Adventures, this was cathartic. I just wish the enemies were the Shark Claws, or fuck General Scales, give him some proper fucking closure. Star Fox Assault is not what I consider a true return to form Star Fox game after they went and experimented with Star Fox Adventures. It's closer to an actual Star Fox game than that one was, but it's not pure Star Fox from beginning to end, even if I think the whole package is by no means bad. The Arwing missions consist of the same Star Fox gameplay we all know and love as Star Fox fans, further enhanced, I believe, by the amazing soundtrack. The Landmaster and On Foot missions are not the worst thing I've ever played. Could Star Fox us all do without them? I think yes. But when it comes down to playing what they have to offer, I've played worse and these are not what I consider a deal breaker. You're still shooting the fuck out of things with projectile based weaponry and if Star Fox 64 can have the Landmaster and Blue Marine moments and still be considered one of the best games on the Nintendo 64, then I think Star Fox Assault can have these sections even though there's way more of it here. And hey, you know what? The multiplayer isn't too bad either. I know I didn't really dive into the multiplayer content of Star Fox 64, but there's only so much I can do about that when everyone else around me is busy doing their own thing. But I managed to drag Mark in here for some multiplayer hijinks and and it was damn good. The on foot stuff is sort of one sided when you have the right weapon. Stop me if you've heard that before. But it's pretty fun when you're trying to shoot each other down in our wings. This sort of gameplay benefits from the joy of competitive play. Though this is no Call of Duty or Overwatch by any means. But if I thought this was fun, then it's a safe bet the Star Fox 64 multiplayer is just as engaging. I had a good enough time with the single player stuff, and I think you will too if you're looking for a slightly different Star Fox fix. And if you got family and friends who want to take each other on within a 11 year old GameCube title, and hey, you just got another reason to buy the game, I think. But until Star Fox Zero on the Nintendo Wii U, Star Fox Assault will be the last console based Star Fox game for quite some time. For the next time we head back to Star Fox, we're going to the Nintendo DS with Star Fox Command. Out of all of them, this is the one I know next to nothing about, so I'm looking forward to seeing what I have in store for this one. And after that, we'll wrap up the adventure with Star Fox Zero and finish our quest in the Lilat system. With all that said, thank you guys for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care. Thank you.